Amen. I want you to turn to uh, the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. When you get there, say amen. Man, y'all fast. Some of you, yeah, they're faster you're lying this morning. Come on, somebody. I know you ain't that fast. <laughs> Mighty fingers. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Come on now. Tell your neighbor we're going to have a good time. Romans 12, 1. Amen. If you're there, I want you to read along with me along with me this morning i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice say living sacrifice holy acceptable to god which is your reasonable service and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed somebody say transform by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god somebody say amen, amen. bow your heads and close your eyes in the sanctuary this morning god we thank you once again father for your holy spirit that's here holy spirit have your way and move however you desire to move today God, we are, we are here to lift up your name, Jesus. We thank you, God, that you are here in this place and our hearts are open. Our minds are open. Father, let the word fall on good soil. Let us leave encouraged and reminded of, of your goodness and faithfulness and mercy this morning, Lord. We thank you for your presence that's here. I pray for your anointing to fill this place and use me as your vessel in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, are you dead or are you alive? Look at your other neighbor. Neighbor, get ready because I'm going to find out. <laughs> I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How many want to be an instrument that's acceptable to the Lord? Acceptable to the Lord how many want to be someone who is experiencing transformation day by day and you don't desire to be stuck but you desire to go where God has called you to be can I get a witness in here this morning see church the holidays are here if you look to the your left my right it says Merry Christmas we just got done celebrating Thanksgiving they're here. You can see Christmas trees being uh, lit up in the month of November. It's not even December. Today's December 2nd. You could see, you could see the cheer and excitement when you go to the store. You, you see all the decorations being put out. And the holiday season is here. And I think it's an important time for us to see a, 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 a time where we give celebration and we give love to the ones that we love and we put emphasis on on our savior jesus this morning it's a time where we put into perspective who and what really matters to you and i and this is one of the greatest celebrations of the year that revolves around our the birth of our savior how many can say amen it's not about christmas trees it's not about christmas gifts it's not about you know getting the the latest and greatest for your family which is good i'm not saying don't do those things how many of we want to bring you know when you give a, a a child a toy that lights up their face and i'm not saying none of that's bad but what i am saying is that there is a center focus that we cannot lose in this season there is a center focus that we cannot lose in this season it's a time of reflection a time where the year is about to close out we're about to get into 2019. 
You can always tell when we're getting into the holidays. Well, I can always tell when we're getting into the holidays by one major thing. Everybody and their mama starts selling tamales. <laughs> Don't look at me like you haven't eaten a dozen already. Because I know the youth have been selling them. I know you were trying to get them at Thanksgiving and you were mad that you had turkey and not tamales. Come on, somebody. It's the season is here. It's real, people. Look at your neighbor and tell them it's real. But there's one thing that we cannot push out. And that is this is a season to celebrate the birth of our Savior. The birth of the one who came to redeem you. The birth of the one who came to save you. Is there anybody grateful for Jesus? So let me ask you a question. Who loves the Lord this morning? No, no, no. Who loves the Lord? You say, I love him. See, whenever, whenever somebody asks you that, I think it needs to be bigger than just an amen. I think there needs to be a, a praise that starts to come out of you. So let me ask you, who loves the Lord this morning? See, this is a season of love. To love the Savior, love our families, love the community, love our church family. But there are just some things in this Christian walk, how many can say amen, that should come natural. And that is one of them. Then whenever somebody asks you if you love the Lord, it should come natural to give him a praise and to let somebody know, yes, I love my Savior Jesus. See, the world is trying to paint a picture of Jesus in a manger, which, yes, he was born humbly, but he didn't stay there. And, 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 and we're not Ricky Bobby. We're not praying to baby Jesus this morning. We're, we're, not, we're not worshiping. We're not worshiping just, just his birth, but we're worshiping the one who came to save us, to die for us, who went down, who died and resurrected again in all power and all authority. You see, we got to keep it the center focus. Jesus came as a man to die for our sins and then we may follow in his footsteps and be the ones who continue to spread the gospel. How many can say amen? This is a time where we shift our focus on the greatness of our Savior Jesus, but we could get caught up in the hustle and the, bu and the bustle. Let me tell you something. I could do this myself. You know why? Because this is a time of productions. This is the time where we got to get, where we're getting ready for our Christmas service. This is a time where, where we're, we're getting ready for, for the holidays and we're getting ready for family. We're getting ready for this. But sometimes we could get that out of focus where we don't keep Jesus in the center for the season. And let's, let's, let's take it a little bit further. Since when did Christmas begin to dictate why I worship? Since when did the season of Christmas begin to just be the time where I really bring my best to God? But see, when we read about Romans 12 and we see Paul, he begins to talk and he says, did you be a living sacrifice? Paul was a passionate man. How many can say amen? He addressed the, 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 the Christians in Rome, the church in Rome, that with love and compassion and a zeal for the gospel. He made it a point to bring to them the importance of justification by faith and the importance of living a life that pleases the Lord. See, it's, it's, this, 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 this book is important to you and I. Why? Why? Because we learn and the Holy Spirit speaks to it about you and I and what we are supposed to do as being vessels for the glory and honor of Jesus. Paul kept the main thing, the main thing. Tell your neighbor, Paul kept the main thing, the main thing. If you don't know what that is, he didn't lose focus. He didn't lose focus. And when we read about Romans and when we read the apostle bringing out one of his greatest epistles full of doctrine and direction. But he comes to a place where he's speaking to a, ch uh, a people that is established, a church that is established. I know this is the 830 service, so some of y'all are a little more holy than the second service. And some of you might be a little more established than other people. And some of you might be, be longer in the faith and you might, might have, you know, 35 years of, uh, of serving the Lord under your belt. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord for that this morning. Come on, praise the Lord for that this morning, for God's faithfulness upon our lives. But he addresses a simple, practical thing that we cannot lose sight of being a living sacrifice. It don't matter how long you've been saved this morning. And it doesn't matter how much head knowledge you have about the word of God. 
and it doesn't matter how long and what ministry you've done it doesn't matter this morning because all of that my friend it only is to glorify the Lord and if you have not if you have not kept yourself as a living sacrifice then we need to check our heart this morning he centers the whole, the whole letter around a chapter, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first, and also for the Greek. For in the righteousness of God is revealed, faith to faith, and is, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. See, people of faith understood that right there. Because see, people of faith understand that you are no longer uh, belong to yourself. How many can say amen? See, these were mature people established. But God doesn't want us just to be a, 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 a sacrifice. That's why Paul said, he didn't say be a sacrifice. You ever notice that? He didn't say be a sacrifice. A sacrifice is dead. A sacrifice ain't got no more breath in their lungs. A sacrifice is at the altar. One eye and one arm. But he said be a living. Mm. See some of you are getting it this morning because you understand that it's not about just being a sacrifice. See, see you could be alive but really you could be dead. You could be alive, but you, some, of you, see, some of you need to wake up this morning because something's not registering in your heart. That you haven't lived this morning and you haven't been transformed of your mind this morning. And God's presence is here, but it's all right. Because I believe that today we're going to get renewed and we're going to say, hey, I am now a new living sacrifice to the king of kings. And I am an instrument in his hands. God doesn't want a dead sacrifice. He wants a living sacrifice. He doesn't want your yesterday. He doesn't want your leftovers. He doesn't want your turkey sandwich after a week after and the turkey's already hard. He doesn't want your leftover tamale. He wants your living sacrifice every morning when there's breath in my lungs that I say I give God the praise. I give God the glory and I don't have a reason. I don't have a reason to be mad but I have a reason to praise. God doesn't want a dead sacrifice. That's why Paul says that you be a living. That I beseech you. That yes, you're established. Yes, God is working through you. Yes, you're a leader. Yes, you're a minister. Yes, you're a life group leader. But are you living? And I beg you. My friend, uh, take the minister card away from me right now. I'm coming to you as a brother. I'm coming to you as a brother. I beg you that you do not be a dead sacrifice. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Because when we get in this atmosphere, people that come to church, people that need Jesus, people that haven't experienced the Lord moving their life, let me tell you something. They walk in dead. You ever heard that? You ever heard that saying, game recognize game? And see, dead things know dead things. There's a certain aroma. There's a certain scent. But when they walk into an atmosphere, not of dead things, but of living things, of something that they don't know, they don't know about, and, and, they, and they come into an atmosphere where they say, man, why is that person lifting that? Hey, I remember him from five years ago. He wasn't lifting his hands. As a matter of fact, he was surrendering to the cops. Come on, somebody. But now he's lifting his hands to see that's why it's important that you don't just sit there and you're just like and Shayna Brown is giving her everything and earrings are falling off and bracelets are falling off but God, and I'm just standing here I'm missing my blessing I'm missing my breakthrough because I want to be dignified because I want to be in my own self. I want to just stay in my stuck. I want to stay in my... But God says I need you to be a living sacrifice. Not dead. Not in a posture where you're just stuck in your situation. Woo! But here is the truth, my friend. You could be alive but dead inside. 
You can be alive but dead inside. What proves love? Sacrifice. What proves it produces selflessness? Sacrifice. What seeks out to please instead of self-profit? Sacrifice. And if there's one thing that we have to be is a sacrifice pleasing to the Lord. Let me tell you something, something that I've learned. It's better to praise him for who he is than to wait for the storm to come and pull it out. It's better to praise him because he's already good. It's better to worship him because he's already faithful. He doesn't owe you anything. He already went to the cross. And some of us coming here looking like, bless me. Bless me with something. My friend, you already made the wrong move. When did, when did Jesus just need to bless you? He already went to the cross. Oh, but we have a blessing that we need to give him. How many can say amen? When you learn how to dance in the rain, it storms don't fade you. When you learn how to dance in the storm, trials don't move you. Because you are already anchored in the one who has already won the battle. Paul was a man of substance. He wasn't shallow. He was anchored. He was a man of stature. He was a man of respect. And even before he got saved, he was a man of fear. Paul was a man of authority. He was a Pharisee. He, he, was, he, was, he, he was brought up in, 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 in being a man that was respected. He was taught by the teacher Gamaliel. And he, he didn't just have shallow words. He didn't have shallow study. But Paul knew the law. Paul, Paul was a zealot. This is why when Jesus knocked him off his horse in the road to Damascus, game recognized game. See, somebody that's established knows when there's somebody else established. And somebody that knows order knows how to fall in rank. And he was out there persecuting. But Jesus had to come knock him off his horse. But what was his response? Who are you? Lord? He knew his place. See, some of us get to a place where we think we owe, we're owed something. And we think that we deserve something. I gave my money. Pro, you didn't even have a right mind. Sis, you couldn't even walk. You couldn't even talk. You couldn't even look nobody in the eye. And now all of a sudden... Because your pocket is filled and your belly is full and your fridge is full of groceries and you have a little bit of status and now that you have a little bit of reputation. Now, something has changed. But a man of stature, a man that people feared, the Savior had to come and knock him off. My friend, I want you to know something. That when we worship, we fall into order. We fall into order. We fall where we're supposed to be. We're, we're in the posture that we are supposed to be in. See, every day he was living a life that was never satisfied. He wanted more. See, worship isn't just a song or music. It's being a living sacrifice. That's why when we get together... That's why we lift up our hands. You don't know the people that walk in here that have certain things going on in their life. I used to get mad when people didn't lift their hands, man. I used to. Last week. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but man, the Lord spoke to me. Put yourself in their seat. Put yourself in their, in, their, in their situation and feel the compassion. 
you know, we're, we're, we're Christians. <laughs> we are Christians. Come on, somebody. We are saved by grace. How many can say amen? And for us to reserve something that don't belong to us is not in our DNA. It's not in our DNA. As a matter of fact, that's a trait of, the, of the, a Lucifer. <laughs> that's a trait of the enemy. Why? Because Lucifer wanted the glory for himself. And he wanted the praise going to him. He wanted to hold something back. That's why I trip out when people can't tithe. <laughs> I ain't speaking about giving. I trip out when people talk, get mad about tithing. You want, you, we get, sometimes people get mad about 10%. Bro, do you want to give it all? You want to give, you want to give 90 and keep 10? Come on. God just says, I just want 10. And, 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 and same thing with our life. He, he just, he just wants our life. A living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. When we get together, it's important that us as the body, we lift up our hands to the king. Why? Because we're surrendered. If you have a problem lifting your hands, maybe you have a problem with obedience. Maybe you need to check your heart, man. Maybe you need to check your heart. Because maybe there's something deeper going on. Maybe there's something deeper in your life that you can't be obedient. You can't, and, and you say, well, I, I'm obedient to God. Stop, dude. You're not Tupac. <laughs> Only God could judge me. Stop it. But God's using your leader to try to pull something out of you and try to straighten something that went crooked. And maybe you have a problem with obedience. I don't know. I trip out, man, because I, 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 I don't deserve. Mm. I don't deserve to even say the name Jesus. So I have a question this morning. What's taking your energy? What takes your focus? Because everything else besides moving the gospel forward and building the church is rubbish. <laughs> right? Everything that doesn't pertain to moving the gospel forward. Well, I know you go through life situations. And I know that we have issues and we have challenges. But my friend, our ultimate goal is what? To build the kingdom and get to heaven. Some of you got excited about that. And some people think heaven is just, I don't know what some people think heaven's going to be, honestly. But it's going to be all about worshiping the king. So if you get bored in worship, I don't know what you're going to do. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you're going to do. If your arms get tired now, if your knee, you're going to have to pray for a, a Heaven Home Depot for some knee pads. I don't know, man. If you get tired right now, how is it going to be in heaven? Oh, but we're going to sing holy is the king. And we're going to gather around his throne with the angels and we're all going to bow down before his feet and say, God, you're worthy. What is taking, your, what is taking your, your energy? What is taking your energy? What are you distracting? How about this? What are you using your voice for that's not meant to be used? Sometimes we give our energy to things that God says, I didn't, I didn't, give you, I, I didn't put that there for you, to, for you to put a bunch of energy there. Come on. You know, it reminds me when the people walked around Jericho. Remember that story? And they walked around. What did Joshua tell them? Don't say a word until I tell you. Then you're going to sound the trumpets and shout. Don't say a word. You know, I can imagine. I'm not going to lie. My feet and legs were hurting yesterday at the parade. All right. I didn't know I was walking in the parade. I wore the wrong shoes. I was tripping, walking eight blocks. Come on, somebody. <laughs> walking back to the car. So I can imagine walking around a city. 
not with some Air Maxes on, with some busted sandals, with one strap, and the straps around the big toe. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and walking around a city and not being a complainer. Not saying one word. Why? Because I would be mad too. Walking around, I would, that's why he said, don't say anything. Because I already know negativity is going to come out of your mouth. I already know that you're going to feed into your doubt and not feed into your faith. Because see, when we speak words, you have to be careful what you say. Because you're not just speaking words. You're prophesying into your situation. And when your situation is a wall, my friend, all you got to learn how to do is just keep your mouth shut. And learn how to walk. And learn how to go forward. And learn how to say, God, you are my portion. And God, you've given me the strength. And God, it's not by might. And it's not by power. But it's by the spirit of the living God. And when it's time to shout, I will see the victory. Somebody shout in this place. See, shouting is a sound of victory. Shouting is a sound of victory. And if you know victory, if you know how to be victorious, you're not going to stay quiet for a king who went to the cross, to the king. Who... Woo! Somebody shout to the Lord. Be seated this morning. Paul said it's our reasonable act. Our reasonable act. You know what the definition of reason? A cause, an explanation, a justification for an action or an event. The greatest event that we have a reasonable act for was when Jesus went to the cross. Died for our sins and rose again. And my friend, we have and we owe so much to the king of kings. That's why I love that scripture in Psalm 100. Make a joyful shout to the Lord. All you lands, serve the Lord with the gladness, not angry, not mad about serving the Lord. When did, when, since when are we mad about serving God? Do you remember what it was like when you weren't saved? Do you remember what it was like when you were in the world? Do you remember what hopelessness felt like? Do you know, do you remember when you woke up on a Sunday morning, you weren't in church, but my friend, Mr. Jack tossed you up all night and you were, and you ended up in a cell the next morning. Do you remember going and, and being lost and being bound? And my friend, that, since when, can, when are we going to be mad about serving the Lord? He says like, that, we, that we will serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God and he is him who he has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. See, Sunday really is just a celebration of what happened throughout the week. See, people that know how to worship, you know that Sunday is really just kicking off the rest of the week. Because Monday, you already had your time with God. And Monday, you already had your mind filled with the Holy Spirit. And Tuesday, you begin to sing your song to the Lord. And Wednesday, you got the blessing, so you praise Him even more. And Thursday, your tire might have popped. But you said, God, I'm still going to praise you. Oh, but you come into church, my friend. Don't come with something ready, not ready to give to the Lord. Come ready to say, I'm coming into your courts with thanksgiving. I'm entering into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. I'm not coming in and sitting down and say, bless me. No, I already have a thanksgiving in my heart. I want you to write these three things down this morning and I'm going to be done. I want you to write this first. Worship is a personal lifestyle. How many can say amen? What did Paul say? He said, present yourself. Present yourself. Who you are in this moment. Who you are right now. Not who you are yesterday. Present yourself. Present who you are. Everything that you have, everything that you own, all your mistakes, all of your downfalls, your ups and your downs. Present yourself. Worship is linked directly to the heart. 
Our worship is reflected in our lifestyle. How many can say amen? Psalm 73, 26, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. See, David understood that his life was an instrument for God's glory and God's honor. Psalm 139, 23 to 24, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. You know, you really get to know someone when you get in their personal space. I thought I'd get a little more amens from the men's home, but come on. Somebody. When you get in their personal space, when you get to see them every morning, and you get to see them every night, and you know their bad habits, and you know their good habits, and you know their downfall. You get to see how someone really is when you're in their personal space. When they present themselves, you get to really see how people are. That's why worship is not just a song, it's a lifestyle. There's a story of an honest man who's being tailgated by a stressed out woman on a busy boulevard. Wave at me if you're that stressed out woman. No, I'm just, don't wave. <laughs> They wrote this about me, hallelujah. Suddenly the light turned yellow <clears throat> just in front of him. He did the right thing, stopping at the crosswalk, even though he could have been beating the red light by accelerating through the intersection. So the tailgating woman hit the roof and the horn, screaming in frustration as she missed her chance to get through the intersection. As she was still in the mid-rant, she heard a tap on her window and looked up into a, a face of a very serious police officer. The officer ordered her to exit her car with her hands up. Hands up. He took her to the police station where she was searched, fingerprinted, and photographed and then placed in a holding cell. Some of you guys are getting flashbacks right now, so just come back. After a couple of hours, a policeman approached the cell and opened the door. <clears throat> she was escorted back to the booking desk where she was arrested. Officer was waiting, where the arresting officer was waiting with her personal belongings. He said, ma'am, I'm very sorry for the mistake. You see, I pulled up behind your car while you were blowing your horn flipping off the guy in front of you and cussing a blue streak at him. I noticed the choose life license plate holder, the what would Jesus do bumper sticker, the follow me to Sunday school bumper sticker, and the chrome plated Christian fish emblem on the trunk. Naturally, I assumed you had stolen the car. <laughs> See, some of y'all laughing, but that's you throughout the week. See, some of y'all laughing, but sometimes you're hitting the roof and you and, and, and you're, you're might be cussing a little bit. You might be giving the birdie to the person in front of you. But let me just remind you that it's not about just what we do on Sunday morning. It's what we do on Monday. It's what we do on Tuesday. It's what we do on Wednesday. It's what we do on Thursday. It's when we get into the car and we go to the work and we go to the workplace on casual Friday. And our boss is on our last nerve and you want to give him a piece of the Holy Ghost. But it's not just about Sunday. It's about what you do throughout the week. That's why I understand sometimes we come in here with things on our mind and heaviness on our shoulders. But my friend, I want you to know, taste and see that he is good. We can't just rely anymore, church. We are established. We're in the Chula Vista parade. <laughs> We're breaking down the wall back there. We have, a, we have a victory outreach day. I said we have a victory outreach San Diego day in the city of San Diego. We're not just some flyby. We're not just some, uh, what happened to that church? No, we've been doing this for 35 years. 
we've been making an impact in the world for over 50 years we're not just here for a day we're not just here for a season my friend we're here until our savior comes and my friend you might be established but don't get religious oh see we want to come in for 25 minutes and give god 25 minutes we want to say I'm going to sing the four songs and I'm going to come to the next service and I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to be in the next service so I'm going to sing it again. Well, sing it in another key even if it's off key. I don't care. Sing it a different way. Lift up your left hand instead of your right hand. I don't know. Figure it out. See, all the time, sometimes we expect a breakthrough and all we've given God is just our leftovers. We've just given God our leftovers for the week. We didn't realize that this is the first that we came to worship God with our best. We didn't come to worship. We came to worship God with everything we had, not everything that we used to have. What did Jesus say? These people draw near, near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. My friend, we cannot have lip service in the house of God. Number two, worship gets God's attention. Worship gets God's attention, a living sacrifice. Psalm 5, 3, in the morning, O oh Lord, you will hear my voice. In the morning, I will order my prayer to you and eagerly watch. And you eagerly watch. Psalm 70, 71, my voice rises to God. And I will cry aloud, my voice rises to God and he will hear me. Have you ever noticed that worship changes the atmosphere? Have you ever noticed that worship shifts the atmosphere in your home? shifts the atmosphere in your life group if you're having life group and you ain't worshiping bro you're starting that life group wrong i'm gonna say it right now i don't care if you can't sing you're not a worship and if you're starting your life group and you ain't worshiping you're something's off because bro you didn't even have a house before so you have a reason to praise him how many can say amen so you i don't get one of the worship singers to say hey, come lead at my life group because i i can't sing but i'm much I, I know to worship and if you need somebody to help you then i'll do something to shift the atmosphere see it's not by it's not by our strength how many know it's by his power that's because you are getting god's attention with the very reason why you and i were created this is why Paul writes of being a living sacrifice, being because to a living sacrifice is truly the heart of Jesus. To be a living sacrifice is, is what we are giving to our Savior. Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice for you and I. So he understands sacrifice. But how many know he's alive? How many know our Savior is alive this morning? And he's living and he's here. So why does God... Why does worship get God's attention? Because worship has to be a sacrifice. It has to be. A sacrifice with faith. How many can say faith this morning? You know, with the dedication offering, they would go grab the grain. In the Old Testament, they would get the oil. They would get the frankincense. And they would, they would get all together and then they would, they would give it to the Lord. That it would be a sweet aroma. A sweet aroma. Let it be a sweet sound. Let it be a sweet aroma. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. That I would just give God a sweet aroma that he is pleased with. Because your life, my friend, Monday through Sunday, Sunday through Sunday, gives off an aroma. Gives off an aroma. It gives off something that the dead recognize the dead only knows dead they only they, 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 they smell the dead but but when they smell life when they smell and they feel the anointing upon your life see when we give our dedication when we give our worship we're giving him not the leftovers but our best a living sacrifice alive how do we get alive we're renewed every morning by his grace. Here's an unfortunate fact, and I know this is real. A lot of times people only worship God to try to benefit themselves. We know there's blessing, 
Yes. We know there's favor and we walk in that. How many can say amen? But you don't try to manipulate God by worshiping to get the blessing. God, I promise that when I go to this court hearing, and you move the judge's heart, and you speak to the jury, I promise I'll worship you forever. My family, me and my house shall serve the Lord. My dog will give you praise. And we try to put a condition on the one who loves us without condition. And we try to put our earthly and our man standard because we're we, we have condition. You have condition. Ain't nobody living in your house for free. You have a condition. But God loves us unconditionally. We have to be careful that we don't bring God down to our level. We try to go up to his. We lift up his name. The last point, I want the worship team to come up. I want you to write this down, and we're going to close out. Amen. We're going to spend a little bit of time just praising and worshiping him. Worship breaks the cycle. Worship breaks the cycle. Romans 12, 2, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may do what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. But be transformed. Transformed. You ever seen somebody that you grew up with and man, they look completely different? <laughs> like 10 years later? Like what? They had a transformation. Transformation is an extreme word. It's something completely new. Something completely different. You know, sometimes I get it. We go through seasons where there's just something missing. You're doing your best. You're worshiping. You're praying. You're fasting. You're in your word. You're serving. You're giving. You're, 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 being, you're being a Christian. And you're, and you're, and you're repenting. And you're, you're giving all you can. But have you ever tried to do it differently? Let me explain. Have you ever tried to get out of your routine? I get up at five, I pray, I eat my breakfast, I read my word, I go this, I read this devotional, I go pray for this person, I come home, I do my life group, I do this, I do that, I come to church. And sometimes we could get caught up in a cycle. We could get caught up in routine. Let me put it this way, we could get caught up in religion. Right? I mean, is this real or is this? We could get caught up in cycles. We could clock in, clock out, and cycles is a way for the world to keep everything running. You know, everything is ran in cycles. When we could fall in routine, we could be complacent. When we fall in a routine, we could become complacent at times. And there needs to be a new transformation. That needs to happen. The reason why we get into a routine and the cycle is because we need a fresh lifestyle of worship. When is the last time that you broke before the Lord? When is the last time that you sang a new song to the Lord? When is the last time that you said, man, I, I need to just get out of my house. I'm not going to pray here this morning. I'm going to go by the beach. I need to, I need to, I need to, I need to get, I need to get a fresh devotion. I need to get a new Bible. 
I mean, just somebody, just somebody break the routine. See, sometimes we can get in these cycles, but let me tell you something. This is why Paul wrote that I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God. When you think about God's mercy upon your life, is when a new praise will rise up out of you every morning. We're humans, right? We're not some super bots. A lot of the times, we can count more of our failures than our victories. And sometimes we can remember the things that we did wrong more than the things that have gone right. But when you think about the mercies of God, and every time he had mercy and grace upon your life, there can be a new song that rises from your heart. A fresh worship. A fresh moment of praise. That you let go of the spirit of heaviness and you put on the garment of praise. What is all this really meaning? Praise and worship takes us into a place. Into a place that the enemy doesn't know about. See, the enemy knows that if he can steal your praise, he can steal your breakthrough. And the only reason why we even break through is because God wants to break us out into a new season. Into a new season every morning. This is why Paul talks and speaks about a spiritual warfare. How many know that war is always over something? It's over land. It's over resources. But see, the enemy, if he can steal your praise and worship, he now has territory of your heart. See, that's what the war is over, is your heart. And for what God wants to take. He doesn't know where you're gonna, where God wants to take you, but he knows if he can get your heart. If he can steal the praise that flows from your heart, he can steal your next move. Let's stand. You know, what I think about, when I think about that in a war, remember Jehoshaphat? What was the first thing that they did? Well, God said, go, just go to the battle and you're going to win. What did they do? Fell on their face and they worshiped. And you know the story this morning. And if you don't know the story, what happened was that the armies that they were, that, that come to take over, they begin to fight each other. God set up an ambush and said, I'm not going to allow them to touch you because you are mine. And see, worship and praise does something. When they praise and they worship, there was a confusion in the enemy's camp. Why? Because the enemy can only worship themselves. And the enemy the only, the enemy wants to just bring pride to themselves and, and take our heart and bring pride in our heart. But we submit our heart to the King of Kings. And we say, God, here is all of my worship. Here is all of my praise. And nothing in me belongs to me nothing I have belongs to me so what I will do is I will prostrate myself in the position that I was formed on the floor and I'll say God you deserve the glory and here I am as a living sacrifice again see church I want you to know something that if you may not have a lot this morning you don't need to have money you don't need to have status you don't even need to be in a place of breakthrough all you need is breath in your lungs to know how to praise the Lord I'm waiting on you this morning because let me tell you something that when you praise and when you worship there is something that begins to pour out of gratefulness all you need is gratefulness in your life I want you to know that whatever situation you may be going through this morning praise is your faith in action break the cycle this morning you know when we break that wall down you think that we're just gonna have service and and, an ordinary schedule you think that we're gonna sing less songs no you think that we're gonna have a less time of rejoicing because you get an extra hour of sleep come on worship team you think that you were just gonna be here and clock in and clock out do you really think that no my friend it's not gonna be like that condition yourself now because let me tell you something it's not gonna be a time to be in routine it's not gonna be a time to just be in a cycle 
it's going to be a time when we break out and where the Holy Spirit takes over and we say we've been doing this for 15 years I've been here since 7 a.m. to 1 o'clock I'll be here from 10 o'clock till 2 o'clock whatever I gotta do condition yourself now say God I'm not gonna just be stuck in my cycle because what happens when you get stuck in a cycle you're moving but you're not moving forward Come on, somebody lift up your hands to the king right now. I want you to begin to practice that. I want you to break the cycle. I want you to begin to sing a song to the Lord. Think about the mercies. Think about the mercy and the grace that God had upon your life. I want you to lift up your hands and say, God, come on. 